Okay, welcome back. In today's episode, I got two Pokemon Blue versions that freeze up. They fire up, but then when you get into the game, they freeze. So I'm going to take a look at what could be wrong here. So upon board inspection here, I don't see anything wrong as far as corrosion or any rust or broken traces. So usually what's wrong with these Game Boys cartridges, even Game Boy Advance cartridges, they just need to be reflowed on both these chips. Now the one I'm reflowing now, this is the ROM chip and the sharp chip to the left is a RAM chip. So I mean sometimes you'll have to replace that chip um, that on, on, uh, on some games but and usually just I just start off with reflowing and see if that yields any successful results now I'm using liquid no clean flux but I'm still gonna take the time to clean it clean it off with alcohol and a toothbrush now I'm having more trouble with the liquid no clean flux than I usually would with the rosin flux just simply because when I'm when I set my iron to 300 Celsius I, I let I j just use that for almost everything I don't like to mess with the dial too much but it seems the liquid no clean it's it's cold so it lowers the te temperature of the iron a bit now now it's not cold like ice cold or anything it's just room temperature liquid cold and sometimes that shocks the tip of my iron so it redu it lowers the temperature causing the, the iron to stick and the solder not to melt right so I think I'm going to go back to using the rosin flux, but unfortunately I did buy a lot of liquid flux, so I'm trying to use it. So I don't I don't like throwing anything away. I don't like to waste anything. So I'm trying to use it and make and find an application for it. So there I wasn't actually heating the board. I was just trying to dry off the the alcohol with my hot air station. It, it just speeds up the process. It seems like this game is working. At least we got far further than last time. So let's see if this game saves and if the battery's okay. If not, I'll replace it. But yeah, I'm gonna fast forward through all this. It seems like the save took, but just in case, I'm going to measure the battery. So with the multimeter, if you want to test the battery like this, you want to set it to DC voltage. And when you probe both sides, you should get something close to 3 volts. In this case, I got half a volt, but anything near 3 volts, 2.8, 2.9, 3, 3.1, 3.2 is a decent battery. It's a, it's a battery with a lot of life left. But in this case, I got half a voltage. So I, I suspect that even though my safe held for, but I only, it was only about five seconds. So I suspect if I left this game overnight or even an hour, this voltage wouldn't hold. So in, in here, I'm just bending the tabs of these batteries just because these batteries are sitting flush with the board not in into any through hole or anything so the trick to this is it's not it's not difficult but there it is tricky you want to get this battery as flush to the board as possible you don't want this battery sitting half a millimeter up or even a millimeter above the pad because then the top shell of the game won't sit properly or won't sit into place and since these terminals are a bit long, I'm going to clip them with the with my flush cuts just to shorten them a bit. Now I'll add some flux here. I suspect somebody did reflow these pads or add some solder to these joints. Because I think this was lead-free solder they used here. This is for plumbing applic applications. 
or perhaps it's just me, but I, I, I suspect that this is lead-free solder here. Since this solder isn't shiny at all, even with the flux, I'm just going to wick it away and lay down some new, new fresh solder. So now it's a night and day difference between before and after and you could just basically lay the battery in place and lay it down. Now this battery here is a CR2032 battery meaning the di diameter of the battery is the same as the CR2025 battery but it's a little bit taller. That's why I advocate to really get these batteries as flush to the board as possible so the top shell, the top sleeve of the cartridge can sit into place. It's going to be even so the, the top shell will s sit a little bit tight but it should it should um shouldn't have any problems So it seems this battery held the save and I'm going to test it in about an hour from now off, off camera and see if the saves hold. I won't show that but it seems everything should be good to go here. So on to game two. Now game two looks to be in worse condition. It doesn't even have a front sticker. There's a sticker on the back and some marker writing. I'm going to test it, see what I get from this one. It seems to fire up. It might even have the same issue as last time. Okay, so this has the same issue as last time. So this might be common um, among Pokemon Blue, Red, Yellow. Uh, I've never seen it before, but I've never really actually fixed these Pokemon games before so this is new to me but I did figure it out once so hopefully I'll figure it out twice let me reflow those chips and see what I get this cartridge seems to be in similar condition so I don't see any broken traces I don't see any corro corrosion or rust everything seems to be in order let me reflow this I'm not even gonna overthink it I'm just gonna reflow it and see what I get
and once again it solved the problem so this might be a common Game Boy fix all across the board I'm sure that if these two games had an issue other Game Boy games have similar issues I'm willing to bet if you have Game Boy games that don't fire up or have distorted um, Game Boy logos at the beginning and they don't look to be corroded or rusty or broken trace I bet you all you have to do is reflow those chips and anybody who's watching this video can do it as long as you can't cut corners you have to have flux and a hot iron and that's it that's all it takes to reflow a chip you lay some flux across the pins and then one even if you don't have to drag across all of them or you want to go slowly one at a time listen you can do this too there's nothing special about this so the save seems to be holding let me just test the voltage on the battery just to be sure Now this one has 3 volts, so I'm not going to swap it, this battery is good. So I'm just going to close it up, and we're done here. So if you like this video, if it helped you in any way, please give me a thumbs up, comment down below, tell me how you like this video, if you don't like this video, and subscribe if you haven't already. And once again, I really appreciate everybody for watching.